Yo, I'm gonna delete the Postgres directory on DB2. Should be safe. Sounds good to me. I'm running the command. At 6 p.m. UTC, a beautiful day in Silicon Valley, work was going on as usual at GitLab HQ. Just kidding, GitLab is fully remote. GitLab is a code-sharing platform just like GitHub, except open source. The main character of the story, team member one, was about to sign off for the day, unaware of the disaster that was ahead. He was working in UTC time, so one of these countries. Unfortunately, his evening was interrupted at 6 p.m. when he was paged in for high database load. After scrolling through the dashboards, he saw that the total number of snippets was rising dramatically and assumed the root cause was spam. This was a fair assumption as GitLab had been experiencing similar spam issues in the past week, just less severe. Over the hours, the team attempted to block certain spam IPs as well as delete spam users. By 9pm, they were alerted to the database having an elevated number of locks. Whenever write transactions are made to a record, it will enforce a lock, forcing further writes to the record to wait for the first one to finish. This ensures that the writes do not interfere with each other. More spam, more writes, more locks, more latency. The engineers continue to search for other sources of spam. Uh, team member one said he was going to sign off as it was getting late. Suddenly, a different alarm went off, this time for database replication lag. GitLab had two databases, a primary one and a secondary replica. Users will write to the primary database, db1.cluster.gitlab.com, which will forward the same write to the secondary, db2. The second database cluster was in standby and only used for failover purposes, a lesson they've learned in the past where db1 was a single point of failure. The process of forwarding the identical writes to db2 is called replication and over 4 gigabytes of data in DB1 failed to replicate in DB2. This was a novel issue without proper documentation, so team member 1 stayed online to support the team. The database they used was PostgreSQL, which had a command PG base backup to create a backup from a live database. The plan was to remove the existing incomplete data on DB2 and to run PG base backup to copy the current DB1 data to DB2, and then restart replication from there. According to the plan, team member 1 SSH'd onto DB2, removed the existing data, and attempted to run the command. At first, the command would just hang, seemingly doing nothing. But after retrying, the command complained that DB1 did not have enough replication clients. No problem, team member 1 proceeded to SSH onto DB1 and increased this value in the config. Upon attempting to reload Postgres, it complained that there were too many open connections, which happens when max connections is set too high. He lowered this value and this time the settings applied without issue. Going back to DB2, he ran PG base backup again and once more it appeared to just hang and do nothing. At this point, frustration began to kick in. The engineers thought perhaps the prior attempts to run base backup before the configuration changes had created some buggy files in the data directory interfering with the current run. The fix would be to remove these files and try again. Well, might as well give it a shot, thought team member one. A hard reset to start on a clean slate, so to say. He prepared the command to rmrf the directory and ran it in his shell session. Immediately after pressing enter, he noticed the shell in which he ran the command was the one connected to the live production db1. He slams control c harder than he ever had before, but it was too late. Of the over 300 gigabytes of data, only 4.5 was left. If you recall, db2 was previously wiped of data before running the backup command. GitLab now officially had zero data in any of their production database servers. Guys, I may have just accidentally deleted DB1. You what? I just RMRF'd DB1 out of existence. Alright, looks like we need a call for some backup. The team scrambled to find a backup of the production data. They checked for the database backups that were supposed to be uploaded to S3, but there was nothing there. 
Then they checked for disk snapshots, but they found they didn't actually take these snapshots for their database servers, as they assumed the other backup procedures were sufficient. Lastly, they checked for logical volume snapshots, or backups of the file system. GitLab had a staging database for testing, which periodically captured snapshots from DB1 to remain up to date with prod. These snapshots were normally captured once every 24 hours, but luckily team member 1 had taken a snapshot 6 hours before the outage. Now there were two choices, they could copy either the entire LVM snapshot or just the Postgres data directory from staging to prod. The amount of data was similar in both options, but they opted to copy the data directory as that would be easier to restore from. Problem was, their staging environment used Azure Classic in a different region without premium storage, which they could not retroactively upgrade, therefore limiting data transfer rates to around 60 megabits per second. Copying the data to production took a solid 18 hours, and nearly 24 hours later, GitLab was back up to normal operation. The only caveat was that all database data, such as projects, issues, and snippets created in the six hours between the LVM snapshot and the outage were permanently lost. This affected around 5,000 projects, 5,000 comments, and 700 users. During the backup restore process, progress was tracked in a publicly visible Google Doc, and they even had a recovery stream on YouTube. Post-incident, it was discovered that the replication lag was actually caused by a background job trying to delete a GitLab employee's account due to it being reported for abuse by a troll, in combination with the other spam. Postgres maintains write-ahead logs on disk. Every operation is first written to these logs before being applied to the database. This way, if the database crashes and restarts in the middle of a database edit, the logs can be used to restore the database to a consistent state. More pertinent to the issue at hand, write-ahead logs are also sent to DB2 for replication. There is a maximum disk usage configured for these, so old logs will be deleted when the limit is reached. The large employee removal operation plus the spammers caused so many operations that logs which hadn't been sent to DB2 yet were deleted, thereby causing DB2 to become permanently out of sync. They also discovered that the database backups weren't uploaded to S3 because the server which was taking the database backups was using the wrong version of Postgres. These failures should have sent warning emails, but they never received any of them because they forgot to enable DMARC authentication on the backup server. Logging onto production servers, changing configs, and running random untested commands is obviously not the best situation to be in, but it's good practice to let someone else review exactly what command you're running and where you're running it before you run it for real. How many times have you asked someone a question only to immediately realize what the answer was, or submit a pull request and immediately find 300 bugs that you overlooked? When you're in the zone, it's easy to tunnel vision and make mistakes. A mental reset or a second pair of eyes is always helpful. But the only reason they had to go through all these shenanigans is because this replication lag scenario was never tested or well documented. No one on the call was familiar with how PG-based backup worked, and how it was actually normal behavior for it to hang for a bit. So in fact, all they had to do was wait, and everything would have been fine. Thorough load testing could have also exposed this replication lag issue before it occurred in prod. But it's possible their staging environment didn't have the same primary-secondary setup as production, which is a problem in and of itself, Next, after DB1 was deleted, they found that many of their backups were broken. These backup steps, or more generally, all rarely run or used procedures, should be manually or automatically tested on a somewhat frequent basis. Months or years can go by without any need to restore from backup, but when disaster strikes and someone accidentally deletes the database, the documented procedure better actually work. On paper, their recovery story looked fine, but if someone had tested all of them, they would have found that 1. doesn't actually work, 2. would take 18 hours to restore from, 3. didn't exist, and 4. would only work if one of the databases was still alive. Lastly, the straw which blew the databases back, the deletion of the GitLab employee's account. So during and before the incident, when a GitLab user is removed for spam, the software would perform a synchronous delete on all the user data. So if the user had 50 million projects, all of them will be deleted immediately. The change they proposed was to instead soft delete by marking the user as deleted, 
and then the real delete can be done asynchronously and in a controlled manner. In the end, team member one was obviously not fired. There were many factors which led to that RMRF moment, and many more factors which led to it taking 18 hours to recover from there, none of which were a single person's fault. GitLab CEO personally apologized Aww. for the outage, and GitLab never accidentally deleted their production database ever again. <laughs>